Right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, to a second conversation now. The Cooking Gas Consumers Association of Nigeria, it's a consumer body. They're appealing to relevant authorities in Nigeria to incorporate uh, more qualified liquefied or more qualified liquefied petroleum gas marketers. Now, this is in a bid, they say, to enable cooking gas consumers have a more cheap and affordable commodity in their various homes. Uh, according to the group, uh, licensing uh, more marketers uh, to function as off-takers is what is obtainable in other liquefied petroleum gas producing countries across the world. Uh, the group also explained that the off-takers are those who are licensed by the uh, NLNG uh, Limited to buy gas directly from them and sell to petroleum gas marketers uh, in the country. The the president of the Cooking Gas Consumers Association of Nigeria is Dr. Hakim Olajide and he issued a statement on Monday as saying the appeal became necessary following what he you know, described as a, a quote, the shrouded process of selecting who qualifies as an off-taker by the NLNG, a process he says uh, the agency had been accused by some industry players of high-level favoritism in the manner they select off-takers who are mostly individuals without the industry's requisite qualification. Now, joining us, we have an oil and gas analyst, uh, Golaho Olojede. He is in Lagos and joins us via Zoom. Uh, Golaho Olojede, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Are you, do you agree with the consumers? I mean, I'm a consumer of uh, uh, liquefied, of, of LPG rather, and I don't know anything about about off-takers. Um, I've had to just go and do some background study of, on this because of this particular topic. But we just go to the to the gas station, you know, and we just fill our, uh, 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 our cylinders and take it home. Tell us a bit more about this whole dynamic between the off-takers and then the uh, gas marketers and the relationship, how the whole workflow goes. Okay, um, gas is also similar to oil uh, in, the, in this dynamics. So for, for oil, you know, when, it is, when the refined products are brought in, you need the off-takers who are the people who have the storage infrastructure. They will take it from PPMC, they will put it in this their storage infrastructure, and then the marketers come to them to buy. So you have a similar structure with gas. Uh, when an LNG has the LPG produced, you need the bulk of takers who will buy from an LNG, put it in their infrastructure, then the marketers can come to them and take and buy and buy from this uh, bulk uh, of takers. So the, the, the dynamics is similar. Uh, first and foremost, I, I, it is the first time I'm hearing that there's a consumer association. I, I thought you and I should have also been a member of consumer <laughs> association since we consume this, uh, this product. Anyway, what they are talking about um, is quite interesting. I, I read the stories myself, and I, I believe that there is the need to do a bit of investigations so that if there are things to correct in that mix, we can correct it. But I also observe that some of the comments being made are not exactly uh, uh, true. For example, um, the, the, the reportage spoke about the conditions for um, appointing someone or giving someone a license as something that has been shrouded in some, in some secrecy. It is absolutely incorrect. There are two organizations that are involved. NLNG in itself, which is a business, of course, because it's a business, it, it, it determines who he wants to do business with. So he has a say on who can become the bulk of taker. They meet the conditions and all that stuff. Then as part of the condition of NLNG comes the regulator, which is the, uh, I, I think this time around, it will be the midstream regulatory agency of uh, uh, the NMPC. So that regulator must license you, must okay you before you can even approach uh, NLNG for uh, a, a, an uptake uh, agreement with them. 
both on the side of the regulator, the requirement are public, is public information. You don't even need to go to the website. I'm sure if you Google it, it will pop up. The same thing goes for the NLNG requirement. It is public information. It is available online. It is available at the website. But if you don't even want to go to the website, if you Google it, excuse me, <clears throat> those requirements will pop up. They are there. So they are not shrouded in mystery. Let me also add that what this, what the Consumer Association is asking for is something that we cannot snap our fingers and put in place, which is why I said we must approach it with caution, investigate, and if there are indeed certain scheming that is going on, we must put an end to those kind of schemes. But you see, NLNG is not a government establishment, although government has a significant investment in it. But the controlling uh, uh, authority, the controlling persons for NLNG are private organizations, the oil majors and the rest of them. The oil majors have not been known to uh, do all these kind of shenanigans that we're talking about. That NLNG remains probably the only establishment in which government has a significant business interest that is making money. It cannot be making money if it is shrouded in those kind of shenanigans that they are being accused of now. I'm not holding brief for NLNG. Okay. But I think that rather than go this way, there must be some sort of investigations to let us know exactly what is going on so that we can open up that place. The safety concerns are very important, which is why I said you must approach it with caution. You cannot just say, oh, because they have complained, therefore, go and start giving license to every looks, every, every dictum and Harry on the street. So you give license to them today because we think we will be able to buy gas 1,000 naira cheaper. And then the, there's a blowout tomorrow and 50 people are dead by virtue of the kind of infrastructure that we have. So it requires something to be approached with caution. Well, so, um, I mean, it's very uh, insightful that which you have raised, but I'd, I'd like to ask you on a personal note now, because sometime in September 2022, the MBS had raised concern about, you know, the increase in cooking gas. Uh, at the time, we're looking at 101%. And so... Now, for you, what, what do you perceive to be responsible for, you know, the increase in cooking gas? Is it all of this uh, whole uh, play that you have mentioned? Or are there other factors that are responsible for this? There are several factors, indeed. Uh, one of it, of course, is infrastructure constraint that we have spoken about. The reason NLNG is not dishing out licenses is that NLNG has said, I think that was sometimes last year when this issue also came up, that look, the infrastructure has to be there and up to scratch. If they are not there or of the right quality, because of safety issues, we are not going to give those licenses. That is, that is taken. So uh, infrastructure constraint is one. Number two is the price in the international market as well. When you look at Europe, you see the same problem. You go to parts of Asia, you see the same problem. You go to America, you see element of the same problem. Prices are up. So there's a global dimension also to the prices that we are seeing. So the third dimension will be where there are schemes and games that are going on in the system, which I said requires investigation or is something we cannot jump into and say, oh, start issuing licenses. No. Let's investigate if there are indeed people who are trying to game the system. Let's be able to stop them. Because here is it. Where there is catalyzation in which a few people can come together, form a cartel, and dictate the price of an item, it, 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 it tends to fleece this public, fleece the system. So what the Consumer Association is agitating for is let's be able to have more players. When there are more players in that space it could it will break any element of catalyzation and prices could become more liberalized and better for the people so we must look at that direction there's also uh issues around when we had uh the the flood the flood affected production because some of the gas that nlng process are also coming from producers some of these producers were affected by the flood. But I think the flood issue has cleared now. 
uh, so that should not be honest. But around the September that you were referring to, uh, part of the problem was also the blood. All right. Um, uh, the, the LPG value chain is, uh, is, um, uh, is, is the issue here. And uh, you said you don't believe there's any hanky-panky going on. Um, but from what, what, I, what I've read about this and from what you're saying, uh, and even what the, the Consumers Association is saying, f we, we need to have an increase in the number of off-takers so that we can save the increasing number of terminals and increasing uh, demand um, in, in the country today. From what I hear, we have about eight storage terminals in Nigeria. And the storage terminals are increasing. So if these off-takers take the uh, the LPG from NLNG, um, they can they can they, they, they now give it either directly to the suppliers or they store it and then give it out to retailers. Now, um, uh, if we are seeing increasing storage terminals, both for uh, locally produced LPG and for imported LPG, because Nigeria imports about 55% of its the LPG consumed in this country, which is a uh, not too good. Don't we need to, with the increasing demand, increase those who are of taking these uh, products from, from the NLNG? I mean, what, what kind of infrastructure are we talking about that will prevent you from saying we're going to give it to more people, uh, let more people come into the business because we have a greater, greater demand? Most, most of uh, the people who have the infrastructure would not would normally have the license. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the requirements are clear. They are not some secrets. And if you meet this requirement, look, a Nigerian that could construct or a business that could put in place an NLPG storage facility, it's not a small business. It's not, it's not a small business that cannot walk into uh, the regulatory agency's office and have a discussion. Um, you know, what are the issues? What are the requirements? Here they are. I'm, 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 I'm provided. I'm meet it. They are not also businesses that cannot approach the NLNG. So if there are specific players who, are, who, who feel that things are not going right, it would be nice, which is why I said, let's also investigate. If there are specific businesses, you have put in place your infrastructure, you have met the requirements stated by the regulatory agency and NLNG, but you are being denied license then it, it, it requires investigation and, and questions should be asked. If we make this more licensing more available to people who are qualified, like I said, we will be breaking the cartel. When you have smaller number of people, they form a cartel and they can control price and they can please the public. So it is in the interest of the public that we have more players in that space so that we can break a cartel and have a better pricing system. I'm just saying we should approach this with caution and not make it at the expense of safety-related issues. So, um, you know, talking about pricing now, a, a lot of persons have been concerned, and even the government, uh, some people have been saying, why has the government not stepped into, you know, the issue of control? But then you can't have that conversation without talking about, you know, subsidy. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Subsidy in, in which area now? In, in PMS or in cooking gas? No, in cooking gas. Well, we have to be very careful about uh, the issue of subsidy. Um, we have been dealing with the issue of subsidy in PMS now for decades. Neither the military nor the Obasanjo regime, nor Yaradua, nor GEJ, nor PMB has been able to deal with that matter. So we must be careful how we walk our way into another subsidy scheme. Rather, what I will advise is that rather than subsidize consumption, can we subsidize production? Can we subsidize the earlier part of that chain? For example, infrastructure. If we are able to, you know, incentivize the provision of the necessary infrastructure, it's a form of subsidy. We make it possible for people to provide infrastructure. Infrastructure will help distribution and it will lower the cost. There was a time in this country when NLNG produces the gas. NLNG is in, is in Boni, in the Bielsa. 
That same gas that is produced in Bayasa is first of all shipped to Lagos. From Lagos, it is struck back to the to the east uh, and the south south where it where it was originally put. Because as at that time there were no infrastructure to hold it. Those are serious infrastructure issues. So you can imagine the cost that has been added by virtue of logistic of moving the gas first to Lagos and then trucking it from Lagos back to other parts of, of Nigeria where it will be consumed. So rather than subsidize at the point of consumption, government should consider the subsidy moving up the chain, like at the infrastructure level where you can incentivize provision of infrastructure. Yes, but um, I, I, that's also, I mean, very understandable. But uh, the question is still if government can actually have a hand in terms of controlling uh, the price. I mean, some no. people are talking about the uniformity. We're still uh, grappling with the issue of uh, the PMS, that's petrol. As at this moment, you can't say that there's a uniform, uh, you know, uh, price for petrol because some people get it at a certain rate depending on where you're buying from. And there are several factors for all of this. So um, that's on the one hand. But however, do you think that there are other alternatives that people can actually, you know, um, fall back on rather than, you know, cooking gas? Because it feels like uh, the issue of demand and, and supply would always play, have a way in terms of the price as well. So are there alternatives that people can fall back to? There are no alternatives that should be encouraged for now. Um, there are alternatives, of course, um, you know, from coal to firewood to whatever you people want to use. Even kerosene is expensive now. Um, so uh, those those are, are things we need to move away from. The real direction we must proceed is in the direction of using this gas, electricity. Is, is an option, but it's not even there. <clears throat> so we need to do all we can to encourage the, the increased consumption. The consumption per cap capita in Nigeria is still low, even comparable to some West African countries. So we must be able to incentivize the system, the value chain, such that there will be increased adoption of LPG as a way of cooking. What I'm just saying is, I'm not saying you cannot subsidize the system. You can subsidize the system. But we should avoid subsidizing it at the point of consumption. Because at the point of consumption, it's not even where most of the costs. The costs have been built up right from production, even exploration. So let's look through that value chain and see if there are opportunities for you know, investment that will lower the total cost by the time it arrives at the point of consumption, so that we are not subsidizing consumption. That, that's my point. It's, it's always a, a serious economic distortion when you subsidize uh, consumption. All right. Uh, there's still a lot of um, you know, uncertainty, secrecy shrouding this, this sector from uh, the, the upstream, where the NLNG are telling us they're going to supply 100% of their uh, of its liquefied petroleum gas to the Nigerian market. Um, that was there were a lot of poses and questions about that. how is that possible. Um, to we don't know what what exactly uh, what percentage they are doing now. And then now, of course, the uh, the the Consumers Association is saying there's a lot of secrecy in in the entire you know off taking agreement and all that. Government has done well because they created a free market. For the terminal terminal um, uh, uh, segment, we have about eight, you know, terminals at play, and it's ended the monopoly. Um, and you talked about, you know, uh, having cartels. Uh, but for the off takers down to the marketers, uh, in between the the movement in those trucks to the storage tanks and then and uh, to the gas stations, we don't know what's going on. We're also hearing that uh, foreigners uh, and middlemen have captured the market. You know, we hear the foreigners and middlemen. In fact, um, the Punch put up an article some time last month, you know, saying that uh, their findings revealed that foreign investors and middlemen slash off takers who delight in incessantly inflating gas prices to the detriment of Nigerians have hijacked 
the Nigerian gas market. This was in November. Uh, this was in November, November 21, 2022. Punch did an investigation, you know, and they're saying that foreign gas investors and middlemen have been accused of being behind the major being the major force behind the skyrocketing prices of uh, gas across the country. So this cartel thing you're talking about, maybe it might still be uh, at play if the, 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 the authorities concerned can't allow more people to come in. You know, if, it's supposed to be a free market. So what are your thoughts, your thoughts on this, based on this punch investigation? Uh, well, I, I am 100% for the need to license more people. And the reason is clear. It has to do with cartels and cartelization. When you have few players, they can form a cartel, they control the price, and they can fleece the public. Um, it is also not impossible that there are indeed cartels. We just need to be able to investigate. This is the role. This is where the regulatory agency comes in. The regulator is always there to ensure that the people are not being fleeced. So issues of uh, people who are trying to game the system are things that the regulatory agency must be able to seek out, pick them, and stop it. So right. if, if foreign players, they can come in if they see an opportunity. Right. I, I'm never going to overrule that. If they see an opportunity in Nigeria, to make some quick money and they see that some ends are not properly tightened they will come in and they will make money in this, this economy so we must now call upon the regulators because sometimes in nigeria you need to make a lot of noise for people to sit up to their responsibility i'll give you a very good example when you talk about what is going on in pms markets today right from importation up until the station the regulatory agency are involved all right the NMPC is the sole importer, so the okay. regulator is involved. Okay. The tank farm owner, NMPC, uh, the, the agency, they sit in those tank farms. They see everything that goes on there. They also go to the filling stations, so they know everything. All right. All right. Uh, well, uh, you, you've said it all, and it seems there's a lot of similarity between what's happening in the PMS sec sector and then the LPG. I think it's all about the system. Um, I want to thank you very much for your time and for giving us this analysis to help us understand better what is at play here. Aboloho Olojede is an oil and gas analyst. He joined, that, joined us via Zoom uh, in Lagos. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. All right, we have more discussions ahead. Indeed, we'll be looking at concerns um, being expressed as the government is said to have um, ignored uh, important factors driving inflation. And we have a certain segment of uh, the business community giving some advice to the government to tackle inflation better. We'll talk about that when we return.